Hi everyone, this is Sean. If you like this video, please press the like button. If you have not yet already, please subscribe to my channel. If you are in private security, private security management, you're gonna find a lot of my videos very helpful. Those of you who have been making comments and dialogue with other subscribers on the channel, I really appreciate you guys. You guys just make things a lot more easier for me when you answer a lot of these questions. So today's video, we're gonna talk about whether or not it's a good idea to have some type of rank structure, um, some type of in insignias with your with your private security company, and I'll show you guys what this is all about very shortly. So let's let's talk about a little bit of background. Law enforcement tends to replicate what the military has. If the military has a rank structure, law enforcement is going to copy that structure. If security has some type of rank structure, they're going to tend to fall back on what law enforcement has. Now, it doesn't always have to be that way. When a private security company, when they're primarily managed by military, then sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes they tend to fall back on what they're familiar with. And you're gonna get some type of, of ranks, a rank system that was consistent with their military career. Same thing with, with law enforcement. And then you might have those organizations where the owner or management doesn't have any law enforcement or military experience. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, that organization might use the military, law enforcement, or create their own rank structure. So let's just talk about that right now. So generally what you have in a military law enforcement rank structure is you have, you have your corporals, you have your sergeants, and then you have lieutenants, you have captains, you have commanders, and then you have chief. Those are the most common types of rank structure that, that they have. Um, your corporal is more or less, this is your person who, who is a field training officer. This person is a trainer within the organization. Uh, this person could also be some form of a squad leader. So if you have a small group of private security officers, the corporal tends to lead them. They're in charge, this person is in charge of the entire watch unless unless there's a sergeant on, on board. Now, every organization, it's, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna vary. When the sergeant is present, the sergeant tends to be in charge of his or her own team. And that's including if there's a corporal assigned. They, they, are, they are tasked with overseeing that, that group of fine men and women for that shift. On top of that, and by the way, the sergeant is most likely going to be in the field as well. They are the field supervisor. And perhaps the corporal is also assisting the sergeant in supervision. On top of that, you have your lieutenants. Um, your lieutenants, lieutenants typically are your post commanders and also captains. It just depends on the organization. Um, your, your lieutenants and your, your, your captains, they're their post commander. They are the man or woman that's in charge of the whole entire post. Above that, you might have your chief of security, and your chief of security is in charge of all the post commanders. In California, we have a qualified manager ownership, a qualified manager and um, ownership responsibilities. Let me, it, it, this, this is gonna be confusing for some of you, but anyhow, in private security, you can you own the if you own the company, you don't have to have any security experience, law enforcement or military. Uh, if you're the qualified manager, you are in charge of the day-to-day -day operation of the business. You have to have that at least one year experience as a private security officer in the state of California. Do not give the owner of the company um, the title of chief of security, because that this person is not doesn't have the qualifications depending on the organization. Does not have the qualifications to run the day-to-day -day operations of the business. Your your owner of the company is basically your board of supervisors, your city council. Um, it, it, they're, they're, they're not actually running the show. Well, some cities and counties, the, the city council and the board of supervisors run the chief or the sheriff like a puppet on the strings. But that's a, that's a discussion of another of, an, of another topic. Um, before I get, I'm going to get sidetracked off of that that image that I just the imagery that I just created. So let me get back to what we're, what we're talking about. <clears throat> Some organizations, like I told you, they're primarily um, ran by people who have military experience. I, I worked in an organization, and those of you who've been in the military, would you just guess who, who was in charge of this organization? 
So we had we had Lance Corporal, which is basically a gimme position. You just have to be with the organization for six months, and then you get your one stripe. Um, and then on top of that, you have your corporal position, which is a semi-supervisor position, training officer position. And then you have your sergeant, and then you have somebody that supervises the sergeant. You, they're, so this organization called them staff sergeants. So they had three stripes, kind of like this, three stripes. And then they had a, a rocker underneath, okay? The operations manager, was called we call him gunny that was his, that was the nickname and i was thinking gunny i would never been in the military like what the hell like why would you name gunny and then on the business card it says gunnery sergeant marine corps only the only guys who've been in the in the marine corps who are management would would name these would give these titles of, of gunnery or gunny gunnery sergeant um, i i just think that's going that's going too far, but it's your organization. You can call your people whoever you want or leadership position. Staff sergeant, I'm not too sure we would, I would go that far, but hey, this is your organization. Um, Lance Corporal, this is more of, of something that you get. It's almost a give me. It, it, it's, it's up to you guys. Um, I don't think I put that one stripe on my uniform. I, I, I just thought it was... It, I, I just didn't want that one stripe on my uniform. And I don't think they made me um, wear that one stripe on the uniform. So, um, by the way, this okay, so this is for sergeant stripes. Let me tell you, I think that the military um, law enforcement structure, I think this is the way to go. Now, let me tell you why. I did a social experiment years ago when I was a criminal justice instructor at Kaplan College. I actually have about three subscribers that are on this channel that may or may not remember some of the things that, that, I, that I did. But when I was in charge of the whole program, and this, this was, you're talking about mid-2010s, um, I started to issue to the leaders of the classroom these sergeant stripes, and they, they would wear them on the collar, they would wear them appropriately. And what I noticed is that these guys started acting like sergeants. They actually started acting like leaders, and they took control over the classroom in, in my absence. Um, so I try to run it kind of like a paramilitary academy, um, well, a law enforcement academy, but obviously way lax. We did inspections and everything. This lasted for maybe about four months, and our administration liked it. Then somebody else took the helm. They took charge of the of the criminal justice program, so I just backed off. But I'm telling you guys, this you just put these on somebody and they already feel like they're the sergeant already. Um, what, why these types of insignia is also important. If you have a larger organization and you need to work one event, um, and then you go to another inter, uh, event and you interact with other people within the same organization, when you wear sergeant stripes or some type of rank in, insignia on your collar, um, other people within the same organization, they recognize that. And if they have a question or they have, there's some type of, of issue, they know that these are the leaders of the organization. They know to reach out to this person if they have questions. And also, when the general public interacts with your, your sergeants or, your or even your captains or commanders who have the insignia, um, they tend to believe that this person is qualified um, for, their, for their position. And that they earn their position, and, and so, a lot of people in public, they've been in the military, um, law enforcement, and the security. They know what the rank structure is, so um, they know that this is the person that they can reach out to if they have if they have a problem. Now, some other organizations, your title might be public safety officer three or four, or even two, um, or PSO two, three, four, and within that organization, you know that somebody if they're a three or a four or even a two, that they have some type of supervisor ability. You can also use that structure. You can use a structure also, you can name your people security officer, supervisor, or public safety supervisor. Um, you could do that too and have no rank insignia. That, that's also doable. Um, again, the only thing is when you interact with other organizations, they may not know what this person's supervisory limits or uh, maybe their abilities are what they can and cannot do in the organization. I just like the simple 
corporal, sergeant, lieutenant, captain, commander, and, and, and chief position. It, it just, it makes things a lot easier. Um, you could interoperate a lot easier with other security companies. If you are a contract security and then there's an in-house security company, there's always that chance that they're gonna have a similar structure than you. It, it just, it, for me, it, may, it, it makes sense, but for you, you may not believe in that. But you guys, just, just do this, please. If you have rank insignia, please wear them correctly. You guys, don't do some crazy stuff. Like put these things upside down. Sorry, sorry for you Air Force people. Um, Air Force puts their their chevrons upside down, and in the Navy, it's my understanding that two bars, two butter bars, are a lieutenant. And I thought that initially that was a captain, and somebody corrected me. Those are the two things that confuse the hell out of people who are not in the Air Force or or, or Navy. Um, it confused the heck out of me as well, but I'm just I'm just playing with you guys who are in the Navy and in the Air Force. Thank you for your service. Any branch that you're in, Coast Guard, Army, Navy, Marines, you guys, I, I Space Force, Space Force, I appreciate all of your service. This is a military-friendly channel, by the way. Um, so let's talk about recognizing someone for their time of service. So at my law enforcement agency, these allowed us to wear these now. It has my last name on it, and it says serving since. Um, this is 2002. This is the first year that I was sworn as a peace officer in the state of California. Um, I'm allowed to wear this on my uniform, and I think that this is something that you might want to consider for your security company. It just, it makes, it, sometimes it makes people feel better about themselves. You can go inside of Costco, guys, at Vons, and they have serving since or been working here since, and then they have the year. It, it just, um, it, it makes, it's it's a it's a feel good symbol. Um, in my law enforcement agency, we have service stripes that are worn on the left sleeve of a class A uniform. Um, my twentieth year is coming up, so I'll be, get to wear four of these stripes on the left part of my uniform. The military they do things a, a lot differently. The army for every stripe is um, every stripe is three years of service, and the Marines is for every stripe that's four years of service. I don't know about the other branches. Um, I think maybe this has to do with enlistment periods. I think enlistment, when you enlist, I think it's no matter what, it's eight years. You could do two years active duty and then six reserve. I, I don't know, guys. Um, if you're in the military, if I'm wrong, let, let me know. Maybe this has something to do with, with the years of service. Um, but where I work, it's, it's for every five years, you get one of these. We used to do it where, where we have every three years, we get one stripe. And then and then we um, and then and then we, and then we changed it around because you have people that I've worked with that have like 30, 40 years on, um, and they almost look like like uh, maybe a master sergeant or uh, a general or something. I mean, because it co it goes from here and it goes all the way up to here, um, so it just it, it looks it, it just, it's it's overdoing it in my, in my opinion. But for private security, because we have a high turnout rate, um, I don't think one stripe for every three years of service is such a bad thing. California Department of Corrections is one stripe for every three years of service on the left part of your sleeve. It's up to you guys if you think if, if you think it's going too far. Um, for me, you guys, so this and this, I would ask my troops, hey, what do you what do you guys think? You think you guys think this is something that you want to do? If my if my people if they want this, then I'll say yes. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't even ask. Um, they would just wear their regular um, uh, equipment w without serving since and then and then the stripes. Uh, but if they bring it up, then I will allow them to do that. W whatever makes them happy, I would definitely institute a policy that allows them to, to, to wear these things. So let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think this is a good idea? Not. Um, is it going too far? Let me know. Take care.